Welcome back to Take 5 Friday, where we talk the people and process behind making and maintaining the U.S. diplomatic presence around the world. This season is all about our industry advisory group. Comprised of up to 35 distinguished professionals from various fields of expertise, OVO's Industry Advisory Group provides valuable input on OVO's major construction projects and serves in an advisory capacity concerning industry and academia's latest concepts, methods, best practices, innovations, and ideas related to OVO's mission. For this week's episode, OVO's Director of External Affairs, Christy Fouché, is chatting with Rob Swedberg, IAG peer and principal at TVS Design. Rob is a licensed architect in more than a dozen states, two Canadian provinces, and Puerto Rico. As principal at TVS Design, Rob leads the firm's public assembly practice. His work has won more than 30 national, regional, and local design awards, and he has spearheaded several significant projects, including the Puerto Rico Convention Center, the expansion and transformation of the Las Vegas Convention Center, the vertical expansion of the Colorado Convention Center, and Nashville's Music City Center. He received his undergraduate degree from the Georgia Institute of Technology and a Master of Architecture degree from Rice University. Christy Fouché is the Director of External Affairs at OBO and serves as spokesperson and manager of the Bureau's press, university, and industry portfolios. We're very excited to have them both with us today. Welcome. Welcome to uh, our industry advisory group uh, season for Take Five Friday. We're so glad this week to welcome Rob Swedberg of TVS Design. Rob has been uh, a peer with us on the industry advisory group now for uh, two uh, seasons. Um, This is his at least third year um, advising our organization. So we're very excited to welcome him, learn a little bit about uh, about him and uh, what what his firm does and how he participates in the industry advisory group. Welcome, Rob. Thanks, Christy. Glad to be here. Yeah. All right. We've got a couple questions for you. Okay. Um, these are questions that we're asking all of your peers uh, this season. So the first one is, what drew you to the field of architecture? Well, you're probably going to get one of two responses from people. Either they came to it late after they studied something else, or my response, which is, it's really the only thing I ever thought about doing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, there wasn't it's a, anything else. Yeah, it's a re- very weird single-mindedness or, or simple-mindedness, maybe of, you know, probably when I was in junior high and somebody asked me what I wanted to do, I said I wanted to be an architect. I probably had no idea what that meant, but it was like, that's all I ever thought about. So yeah, it's kind is of- it still? Yeah, it still is? It, it is, it is. You know, um, you know I've, I, I, I've lived a very simple career. I graduated from graduate school, started working at TVS in 1992, and I'm still here. So, yeah, I think maybe that's the simple mindedness part. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. Um, you know, the OBO's mission is pretty, is pretty broad, but also very important. You know, uh, building and supporting U.S. diplomacy around the world, um, making sure that the, the folks that you know, dedicate their careers to promoting democracy um, around the world are in homes and in office buildings that protect them and keep them safe. Um, you know, with our with our mission of providing that comes a significant capital construction program, um, and the industry advisory group. You, along with your peers, uh, you know, provide advice and guidance on the designs of our projects. And I know um, you've served on a, on a few peer reviews. Um, but I wonder. I know a lot of peers when I reach out and say, "Hey, will you join the industry advisory group?" They go, "What is that?" Yeah. <laughs> and then and then after, "What is that?" They're really excited about the idea or the opportunity, um, you know, to sort of do their jury duty, if you will, sort of civic. Uh, if if they're not sort of drawing and designing the embassies, you get the opportunity to help us think about, um, you know, how what is the best way for us to, um, you know, plant the flag for America around the world. And so I just wanted to, you know, ask maybe what your first uh, experience was with hearing about the IAG, and then um, as you've, you know, been on it a, a, a few years, um, you know, what you feel like is, has drawn you most to staying on uh, and feeling proud about your contributions. Sure, you know, that's a great question, because I'm sure like most people, I wasn't exactly sure what I was getting myself into when I started. <laughs> um, you know, there's, you know, when, when, when something like this presents itself, there's obviously an element of service that, you know, is, is very, you know, intriguing and you want to do it. You know, I think that that is, is someone in the design world who does big buildings, you know, 
obviously the first thing I thought about is what, you know, the symbolic importance of what you guys do and what it says about us and the story it tells. And, um, and, and over the years, as you scratch the surface, I think the most fascinating part is just the sheer complexity of, 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 of what you guys do, the footprint that you have and the impact that, that, that it has on literally millions of people in thousands of places. It's really kind of a little bit overwhelming when you guys go down and talk about the breadth of your portfolio and in, in, you know, in, in the, the peer reviews that I've been able to take part in have been in, you know, some challenging locations where there isn't reliable electricity, there isn't reliable services. And how do you build something that's appropriate for the mission that tells the story that you want to tell and works and houses, you know, hundreds of people in non-ideal situations. It's really pretty ama amazing. Yeah. And, and those are the places that are sometimes the most critical for diplomacy. You yeah. know, these, these newer countries or, you know, places where we're going, where, uh, you know, we might have an opportunity at the very beginning of the establishment of the new government to, you know, have a part in um, helping to shape, uh, you know, how, how they move forward. And it, so I, I wonder if you, you know, if there's a lot of folks that would really love to be on the IAG. Um, I wonder what advice, guidance, or comments you might have for for those people that might want to that might be wanting to get in that same place um, or make these same kinds of contributions. Yeah, you know the the profession is on some level highly uh, competitive, and so you can go out there and look at all these various people out there as competitors, but it also can, doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be a zero sum game. You know, our practice, we're just a little old firm in Atlanta who does massive projects all over the world. And we do that by going out into different cities and partnering with other architects. Um, and it's not our business model to open up offices all over. And we're not trying to compete with them on the day in, day out things. If there's something that's what we're specialists in, then we will partner with people and um, and work with them. And that's been liberating and a wonderful experience. I've gotten to work with incredible people all over the world. And you learn so much about things. And, you know, you know, we we tend to work on a best ideas win kind of philosophy when it comes to design. So we're, we're confident. We know what we're doing and we just open it up and you just never know where that spark is going to come from, where that idea is going to come from, um, that's going to make a difference. And so, you know, I think it takes a degree of self-confidence to kind of be open and vulnerable to that. But I think the reward of being open and collaborative and um, not trying to monopolize the situation, but keep an eye on what you're doing this for is we're trying to make the best building and the best situation for this client. And our job here is to facilitate it and employ our skill in that. But it doesn't mean that every idea has to be ours or um, we have to monopolize it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so important in teamwork. I, we have a new director and you know, he's been talking about uh, so much about that you know, we really do have customer, all kinds of customers, even though you know, OBO is embedded within the department, those people that we're building, building buildings for and serving are our customers and really kind of orienting ourselves to that you know, kind of client mentality, like really how can we serve you? What, what, what can we do for you? And you're right to, do, to answer those calls. It really has to be what's the best idea, but not who's in charge. We're, we're, we definitely experience that internally as well. Um, okay, so in your career, I'm sure there've been amazing projects that you worked on. I know you guys have, had, have done a couple really, really cool projects at TBS. Um, and I know you've been there a long time in your career. Um, what do you think has been the most exciting and what kind of keeps you coming back every day? To this <laughs> well, that's kind of asking you to pick your favorite hard. child. Who's that's your favorite client? I know, I know, I know. Um, maybe, maybe, so what, what, what has been maybe the most, uh, maybe the most challenging yeah. or, you know, the kind of the one that, you know, you really like you got through it and it was, you were like amazing yeah. and maybe why? Well, <laughs> you know, you, the one that kind of stands out as kind of being emotionally special was probably a project we did down in Puerto Rico. Really extraordinary building, kind of something like nobody's ever seen before. Um, but what makes it special is kind of my first project where I, I 
was essentially autonomously doing it, you know, from a design project management. I was 30 years old, you know, this thing fell in my lap. We won a design competition and um, it was a seven year effort. And we went through three governors and I kind of feel like I had a PhD in Puerto Rican politics. And, you know, it was one of those things uh, I started it and I was a newlywed and I finished the job and I had two kids. And so, so it was, it was one of those special projects, made some lifelong friends, um, business associations wow. out of that project and kind of taught me a whole lot. Cause you know, when you're, when you're starting something and you're young and you're terrified, you're a sponge, you're just picking things up from everybody and you learn what to do and you learn what not to do. And so I think of all the things I've done, that's been the kind of most impactful thing for myself mm -hmm. and um and maybe even the most rewarding personally um mm -hmm. but it was a little bit of a time ago so <laughs> there's been a lot of fun <laughs> things in the meantime um one of the one of the weird things about my career is that almost every project i've done has been one of the largest or most important projects that that city or client has ever done it's, it sounds kind of braggy but it's really the motivation. Right. So if you ask why you keep coming back to it. So we did Javits in New York City, you know, two full yeah. Manhattan City blocks. You know, you can count <laughs> on one hand the architects that have impacted two full Manhattan City blocks at one time. Um, Las Vegas okay. Convention Center, one of the largest projects ever done in Las Vegas, Nashville, or, you know, McAllen, Texas, which is a small border town. But the building we did was just, so important for them and has had such a lasting impact so it's you know size is important but it's kind of the impact that it has in those in those cities and those communities and i think that's what's addictive about it and why you really just can't quit um because that that as you're working out these problems just the the how incredibly existentially important these projects are to those communities and the thousands of people that get jobs through them and the economic impacts they have. Um, it's, it's, it strokes your ego and it's humbling at the very same time. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can only imagine. I, I, I am not an architect, but I'm constantly wowed every time we do a project at how the architect engineering teams are just experts in everything in that country. <laughs> It's really cool. Yeah, um, we, when we uh, when we were working on Puerto Rico, we did a, a, a physical model and we we painted the scale characters red, and we were going in to show it to the governor, and they stopped us and made us paint the scale characters blue <laughs> because red was the color of the opposing party, and it was something we had never thought of. We just liked red people, you know, and it's just the the it, the incredible complexity of all of this and how you tell the stories and get things built. Yeah, you you have some friends uh, that have worked for the State Department that have had very similar stories. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, that, that's great. Well, we are, um, you know, as we continue to embark on our continuing our mission, um, but adding some of the additional complexities with the executive order for um, climate change and addressing some of the things the current administration is putting forth, which we know are critical and important. Um, you know, we are using the industry advisory group as a way to really uh, move innovation uh, in our organization in an appropriate way. So we thank you for all that you've done on the projects and that you all will continue to do um, to help make sure that our program is doing the best for advancing not just the taxpayer portfolio, but also um, um, advancing American interests around the world. So thank you, Rob. Thanks for being on Take Five. Well, it's our pleasure and my pleasure. So thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Take 5 Friday. We hope you'll join us again next week for a conversation with OBO's Director of Program Development, Coordination and Support, Angel Dizon, and Nat Oppenheimer, IAG Peer and Senior Vice President at Silman. See you then.